So today's uh, topic that we are going to discuss is something which is quite upcoming and which requires a lot of hands-on experience. Uh, I would hope in the next INR and so I will give you an introduction to, uh, I'm sure the class has been taken by one of my colleagues, Dr. Buja, about the uh, usage of ultrasonography in ICUs. In line with that, this is something we have till date been thought and understood to be have done by cardiologists. But now uh, there's an advent of uh, intensivists into this field where they are doing echocardiography not for cardiac illnesses, not for uh, cardiac uh, uh, diagnostics and uh, therapeutic purposes, but to give them a better understanding of uh, problems that are, they are facing with patients in the IC. So we'll just start with the brief of the basic views uh, uh, of, uh, and what information we gather from that use not from the cardiology perspective, but from the intensive perspective. And then in we'll have a few pointers about uh, what we look for when a patient is in shock. So we take this lecture more of as an initiator for you, giving you an idea of what you need to read on, what you need to practice on. Okay, this is not something which you attain in one hour. Uh, it is a full intensive, each topic is a full day thing in itself. But I would love that many of you take a cue from this next coming one hour and initiate yourself into the field of uh, echocardiography in IC. So uh, there Bain has been that not all of us have a cardiologist at hand. And even if you have an expert cardiologist, he's not there at the bedside. You are there at the bedside. The intensive is there at the bedside. And we need repeated scans in a patient who is in shock. It's not a walk-in patient. It's not a angiography patient or a who does get an ultra echocardiography done and is done for the whole day or full admission. We need to do it again. You might even need to do it hourly. So the uh, problem uh, is there in the ICU that we don't have a cardiologist sitting there at the bedside. Presence of different lightings, uh, position of the patient on a ventilator, lungs being a problem that come in between the hyperinflated lungs coming between the probe and the heart. These are some of the challenges that you face with a, a eco probe in your hand, but there are advantages. It is a point of care ultrasound uh, system, which is now becoming the standard of care. It is basically an extension of the ultrasound that we say in critical care terms. It is a rapid assessment of cardiac function and physiology, and it hopes and attempts to give you rapid answers to specific questions in a critical ill patients. Questions that are specific to critical ill patients. Okay. <clears throat> So we are backed by evidence. It's not something not some which we are doing as an experiment. There were a lot of lots of data, especially in the, uh, this uh, past two decades, where transfer acid echo has proved to be diagnostic and up till 90, 84 to 90% of your patients with practice, this diagnostic accuracy even improves. There's a learning curve. Once an operator is able to uh, learn and get uh, accustomed to these uh, procedures and these maneuvers, it can lead to, uh, uh, you know, management change in almost 51% of the patient. And there's a lot of data that has been published in reputed journals which back up to this claim. Uh, Chess 2003, 2005, intensive care medicines, you can see a lot of data. I'm not going to the data part. But yes, whatever we are doing now is backed by a lot of research and a lot of data. And now uh, is becoming a standard of practice. Okay. So most of the time, we'll go for a 2D view. It tells you the structures, the various dimensions. Okay, again, as I said, we are not here to be cardiologists. I myself don't know all the dimensions and the, the structures. What I know is just specific to my critical care practice. Okay, we use the M mode sometimes, which gives you a moving structure and timing. You will see in the IVC assessment later on. And if you want, and you can use Doppler, which uh, pulse wave or a color wave Doppler, which can give you the velocities and the direction of the color coding. BART is an acronym that we use. Blue away red towards. So flowing blood or any fluid going away from the probe is blue, coming towards the probe is red. Okay. So before we start, okay, before we start, we need to ascertain a few things. Your patient, if possible, if conscious and cooperative, or even if it's unconscious, if it's possible, we prefer it to be in the left little decubitus position. So that the heart becomes closer to the probe, so you get a better image. Okay, and uh, you can raise the left arm above the head 
to increase the spaces between the ribs. You basically want bigger spaces so that your phage array probe can uh, fit in between the two ribs. Okay. Uh, doctors usually prefer to sit on the right side, but whatever your comfort level is, you can uh, sit in this position. In the ICU especially, you cannot always afford. You might have a echo machine or a, a, a renal replacement machine on the right side. So you will have to sit on the left side. Uh, get used to the probe handling. If you are lucky enough to have a machine uh, in your home, uh, in your uh, setup, uh, do daily uh, echoes so that you get used to it. Okay, and get yourself familiarized with various knobs, imagings, and the movements of the probes. Okay. So this is the uh, phase array cardiac probe that we use. Uh, use it has a small footprint. Okay, this is the pointer. You will see later on that this pointer matches with the pointer on the monitor. And this is the body that we use. Let's talk about, uh, so we know, uh, once you get to know the machine, you know how to handle the probe, you also have to see how you manipulate the probe. Okay. Now, imagine this is a probe, okay, and this probe will be throwing out ultrasound waves. These ultrasound waves will cut through the organ that you see, and this is what you will see in front of you. Okay. So there are four basic movements we do when we handle a probe. One is sliding. You start, uh, we'll see later on, this is a left parasternal area. Okay. You start at this area and you can gradually slide the probe to whichever direction you want. Okay. This is called sliding. And this is not blind sliding. As you slide, you can see the various structures in front of you. So you can see, get various information by sliding. Then is the rocking. When you rock, is a gentle to and fro movement towards and above, away from the indicator. If you remember, this is the indicator or the pointer. Okay, so you get an idea, and you can, you get an idea that in the image and in the body, what is matching? You have a screen. So right side of the body might be matching the superior aspect of the body. So you have to get a mental image, an hand-eye coordination that okay, whatever I'm seeing on the right side of the screen below the pointer is something which is towards the head. What am I, whatever am I seeing below, uh, in the left side is something below the probe. So this is to get an orientation, this is called the rock. Then is the rotating. Okay. You see the relevance of all these things in the upcoming slides. Rotating is we rotate the probe okay, in different clock positions. So this is the 11 o'clock position. If you see a watch in front of you, this is the 11 o'clock position, this one. And now you have rotated it by 90 degrees to the 2 o'clock position. So this will give you a long axis view. This will give a short axis view. We'll see in the coming slide. So basically it gives you, it changes the axis. Apply a school time physics. So the waves right now are cutting like this, the 11 o'clock position. When you turn it by 90 degrees, the waves cut in the 2 o'clock position. Go straight like this. When this happens, we'll get different information. When this happens, we'll get different information. Then is it tilted. You can see this is the wave cutting right in the perpendicular direction to your probe. By tilting, you get new information, different information. Okay, so if I've kept it in the heart here, right here, I'm getting a short axis view. If I want to see the superior structure to the heart, I will tilt it downwards. The waves come like this. I want to see towards the basal structures, I will tilt it in this direction. Okay, so this you get more accustomed to. If you actually start using it, when you actually start using it, then practice the sliding, practice the rocking work. And with this, you see what happens on the screen. Practice the rotating, practice the tilting. This was about the axis thing. So if we are keeping it in this position, this is the two o'clock position. This was, uh, yeah, this one. This is two o'clock position, you get the short axis. So heart, you know, it's, it's not like this. The heart is tilting. Okay, so when the heart is tilting from the right to the left one, this is the left, you're facing the heart. If you keep the probe orientation like this, this is a short axis. Imagine a banana you've cut like this. So you're cutting the heart like this. So whatever structure you see, you'll be seeing from one end, from the top and cutting the heart in, in the short axis. This is the long axis. You're cutting the heart from the superior to the inferior. Plane. So imagine you're opening up the heart and whatever you see, is the long axis. So this is the short axis. This is the long axis. This is the superior part of the heart, medial, the later. This is the anterior. 
what you see is the inferior and the posterior. So make a picture in your mind. This is going, not going to be easy if you don't imagine the heart lying in the chest and then put a probe and then measure the structure. Okay. These are the areas that you divide when you put a probe. This is the para, these are the parasternal areas, the right and the left. For all practical purposes, unless specified, parasternal position is always less. I'm talking about the heart, I'm talking about the ego. This is the suprasternal notch area. This is the subcostal probe area. And these are the apical. For all practical purposes, apical again is left unless it otherwise mentioned. These are the three basic areas that we do an isolate. So the parasternal, the apical, and the subcostal. Yeah. As I said, parasternal or the left parasternal, apical, subcostal. This we really do in the ICU. So let's talk about the plaques view. Just try and get an image in your head. This is the parasternal long axis view plaques. So third of the fourth intercostal space, this one, okay. The notch or that the pointer towards the patient's right shoulder, okay. So this will be, I just go back, this one, right shoulder, cutting the heart like this from superior to inferior, cutting it open in the long axis. This is the parasternal long axis. If you go to the two o'clock position, this is the short axis. Yeah.